I wasn't ready to go so early, but I can, you know, I'm, I'm a professional for Christ's sake. All right. Three, two, one. Welcome to Grant's Rock Warehouse. And today we are looking at the glam rock band, Sweet. I want to welcome author, podcaster, and contrarian Martin Popoff and fellow contrarian Reed Little to today's show. Sweet was one of the biggest bands in the 70s, but how are Sweet looked at today? How will this band be remembered? The panel is here and ready to discuss, so let's get started. Um, I actually went to a Motley Crue gig um, back in the last year, and I could not believe the intro to their set. We used to open with a, a theme written by David Rose, uh, The Stripper, and then it went into a track called Hellraiser. Well, they had The Stripper going into Kickstart My Heart, which has got exactly the same guitar riff as Hellraiser. So it's like um, almost 20 years later, Motley Crue, Ah, oh, sweet. Hey, welcome to Grant's Rock Warehouse. And today we kind of have a special episode. I've got both Reed Little and Martin Popoff here today. And today we're going to talk about the band Sweet. Uh, the primary focus today is, will the band re be remembered as a glam rock band? And how will they go down in history? Will they be remembered just in general? Because you know how things work. How many people talk about Benny Goodman? Not too many. So this, we're just going to have a general discussion. Normally we do ranking videos, but you know, we're trying to break out of that a bit and try to go to some different type of things. So I want to welcome Martin and Reed. How is everybody tonight? Excellent. Well, Doing excellent. great. Looking forward to talking about some uh, badly made up uh, dudes. Well, <laughs> it was the time. And as you can see in the lower right, they're bad badly made up. But the thing is, you know, times change. We may look at Sweet. Sweet might have been looked at a different way back when they were out. And tonight, today, they may look be looked at differently. Martin came up with this topic. We knew we wanted to talk about the band Sweet. They don't get enough love. And of course, on Grant's Rock Warehouse, we want to hit all these bands that need more love. So let me go with Martin first and get his whole opinion on Sweet and will they be remembered? Martin, okay. go ahead. All right. Well, uh, as you know, I've, uh, I've done an actual Sweet book, Rebel Rouser, a Sweet user manual. So Sweet's on my mind. This is not that old. It's a big, heavy, you know, lots and lots of words book. Um, so yeah, I've, I've definitely thought about this topic a fair bit. Um, there's their first album. Uh, you know, it's called Funny, Funny, How Sweet Coco Can Be. So will they be remembered as a glam band? Will they be remembered as a heavy metal band? Will they be remembered at all? Um, so, you know, I, I thought about this and thought, there you go. There's the alternate cover. Um, so uh, I think mine's the German one. And then I think it's uh, got done me wrong. All right. I believe that's uh, that's not on the other one. So it's got one heavy song on the whole thing. But the rest of it is quite glam. So so, you know, obviously um, they were a big, big part of the glam scene. Uh, they put out a lot of singles that weren't on albums. They had lots and lots of hits, lots of hit singles. Um those singles were distributed all around the world, picture sleeves like like crazy. Um, their biggest market was actually Germany. Um, they did rather well in Germany, um, you know, and they slowly got heavier and heavier. But but literally they had lots and lots of glam singles. And and the first ones were quite poppy, Coco and Chop Chop, those kinds of songs. Funny, funny. Um, but then they got a little heavier with Wig Wham Bam and and. Um, rebel rouser and, and all those those kinds of songs yeah i've got that one too and you and you notice how that's uh that's all this uh this um designed to look like the the hershey's chocolate sweet thing eh? it does yeah this yeah. is all the bell stuff yeah that's so so they were on bell in america and you know the first the first way i ever found out about sweet was on one of those ktel samplers with um little willie uh so you know be, before the first album came out so so they're part of that whole glam scene will they be remembered as a glam band though i wonder if anywhere they'll be remembered as a glam band because i i often wonder if anywhere glam is going to be remembered a, a, at all because it was such a you know amorphous loose concept it was more of a fashion thing 
but bands sounded all quite different. Sweet famously being the heaviest one, you know, followed by Slade and then maybe someone like Mud. But then, uh, you know, you had very artistic things like Roxy Music. Of course, you had Bowie and T-Rex and David Essex and Gary Glitter and all that kind of stuff in there as well. Um, but, um, you know, over first, first off, you know, over in America, they were they're more known for a novelty hit in Ballroom Blitz and having this album go gold. You know, they were a big it band. I was there at the time, you know, in those they, they, it was a roller rink classic, right? Roller skating classic. Right. Uh, oh you my had God. that and you had Fox on the Run. But for us metalheads, you know, we were loving the heck out of uh, No You Don't, Sweet F.A. and Set Me Free and Into the Night. Really, really heavy songs. Really modern heavy metal, like as good as Montrose at the time, um, you know, Priest before there really was Priest. I mean, Rock and Roller was out in 74. Our compilation version of this, of course, is uh, is the compilation of the UK Desolation Boulevard and the Sweet Fanny Adams album. There you go. So that's yeah. that's actually the better album. That, that album is actually better than our U.S. compilation and certainly better than Desolation Boulevard. I would say this is album is probably their strongest record they ever released. Yeah, I'm exactly. I'm more of a I'm more of a I, I go with I go with this one. I go with Give Us. Oh, me. look at you, Martin, going yeah. there, going contrary. Very, very heavy, very heavy album. Uh, beautifully recorded at uh, at Music Land. But so so back to it. So I I wonder if um first off i don't know if they'll be remembered as a glam band particularly if they are and it'll just be by academics like us um but i don't know if glam will be remembered so that's the caveat there in america i almost lean towards i don't think they'll be remembered at all kind of thing because i think you know as this uh as this you know interesting discussion comes about uh Radio being less important, classic rock radio being less important, and paring down the playlist all the time, all the time, all the time. I think we still hear Ballroom Blitz, but I've noticed over the last couple of decades that Fox on the Run has fallen away. Um, you don't really hear Little Willie or any of those songs as well, which were big, you know, earlier. Love is, love is like oxygen. You may still hear that. True. You still hear that a little bit as well. Um, but I think uh, I think Sweet is one of those bands that is primed for being completely dropped from the rock radio lexicon, the American pop culture fabric, and they won't be remembered at all. At all. And I guess the, the last thing I want to say is that for metalheads in the know, I think they'll be remembered somewhat as a as a pretty awesome heavy metal band because this thing is just start to finish gorgeously performed and played and I would say over three quarters heavy. There's your there's your give us a wink thing yeah. out of the vinyl, right? And on the back it goes like that, right? Uh, and then, uh, you know, one thing that people forget about, and, and really nobody knows this or nobody really thinks about this, but the follow-up album from 1977 was pretty crushing and heavy, you know, Windy City and stuff. So this, this album, this album, and Give Us a Wink, and Grant, as you mentioned, Sweet Fanny Adams, if you want to be pu purist about it, are, are the three very well, you know, well-recorded, well, well-played quote unquote heavy metal albums this is when the clothes were getting less glammy it was more like you know i i love this i love this picture that i used on the front of the sweet book so so this is late late period so this is like 78 79 ish when the clothes were like yeah that's like this, just, this yeah one. like like sort of class classy clothes but in between there was sort of a leather and denim uh sort of look uh in between when they were pretty heavy um so yeah, to, you know, just sh show a couple more here. There's your, there's your level. I always, I always have to stop and go. Is it on the level or level-headed? Right. Um, there's, there's a later one. I, do, I don't have the very last one, but here's, Here here's is. the comp that's got. Yeah, there you go. Um, there's there, the original that, cover. Yeah. The one that Martin just showed. It's the same record, just different artwork yeah. here in the states and in Canada. But there's one there. But there's one later record as well, right? Uh, how does that work? I can't remember. Oh, that one I don't have. Yeah. But, you know, I look at this comp and, and yeah, you see this is a mix of their, you know, somewhat heavy songs mixed with the you know, Tom Tom Turner. This whole Chin Chapman thing. They like they like that repetition of, of words, right? 
And then we've got the, the classic, uh, you know, the, the live album, half live and live and originals and stuff. So that, that was cool, strung up. And then, yeah, I, I, I'm quite fond of this album. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, so I'll, I'll stop talking there. But, yeah, to, to sum up, I really wonder if Sweet will be remembered at all. Uh, yeah. Reed, what do you think? What's your opinion on Sweet? Okay, so this is going to take a little bit of a dissertation. First off, uh, oh, of course. Martin. It's I Reed Little, of course. I absolutely love the direction that this chat took. Because as soon as, as, as I had a thesis question, it took me in the direction, okay, how exactly are bands remembered, yep. period, whether they're sweet or anybody? And I came up with, in, in my mind, four main ways in which bands are remembered. Way one, they simply never stop, right? So that's where you get your examples like ACDC, the Rolling Stones, and KISS. We still remember them because they're still going. In some cases, they're bigger than ever just by virtue of nostalgia. And you have two and three generations of people listening to them. Four in the case of the Stones. Uh, way two, they were so big that they simply have never been out of public consciousness. Now, that's pretty rarefied air, but we're including bands like the Beatles and Led Zeppelin. They were simply so dominant in their time that you know people are still talking about the beatles and they haven't put out an album since is it 69 i'm not a huge beatles fanatic 70 so. let it be was 70 11 be was 70 okay but still that was a long time ago uh step three or way three is if they are brought back to life by a younger band and the first example that came to mind for this for me was when fear factory covered gary newman's cars right Gary Newman, huge at the start of the 80s, completely disappeared, at least when I say pop culture, everyone needs to understand. I'm talking about American pop culture. I have no idea what's going on anywhere else in the world. Don't claim to. But Gary Newman was gone from American pop culture consciousness, and Fear Factory made him huge again. And then four is related to that, and that is being brought back to life by some other form of media. Uh, and good examples are, um, of course, Queen's Bohemian Rhapsody movie, the appearance in Wayne's World, and they also have a Broadway musical. Now, arguably, Queen are still going, not going. I don't know if they're still touring, if they've stopped touring. But nonetheless, they have these big mass media events which bring Queen into consciousness. Uh, and lately, that includes the ultra bizarre rebirth of Kate Bush at the top of the ch pop charts due to her uh, running up that hill, appearing in Stranger Things. No one saw that coming, nope. but it had a massive impact on pop music. And I guess you could put uh, Metallica in that same category, although Metallica has never gone anywhere. So you have four ways in which bands can achieve functional immortality. Uh, Clearly, number one, not an option. Now, technically, a version of Sweet appears to even now still be going. Andy mm -hmm. Scott Sweet, but they don't tour in the U.S. Uh, if you look at their Wikipedia page, it, it looks like they've got an awful lot going on. But in fact, they tour like Australia once in a while and, and don't really do much else. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, they're really just not still going. And since three of the four original members are deceased, Brian Connolly going in 97, uh, drummer Mick Tucker in 2002, and then we just lost Steve Priest back in 2020. Now, sometimes when a band member passes, that gives them a little bump in notoriety, right? Because people remember that they exist. And I think it's safe to say that didn't happen on any of those three occasions with Sweet. Uh, number two, also clearly never an option. They were just never that big in the U.S. They had a lot of singles, uh, as, as Martin has already pointed out, big singles band. They never sold albums in the U.S. They have one gold album, and that is it. Um, and that includes yes. their Probably late not. period compilations. And if you look at lists of best-selling albums, in the later career stages, it's the compilation albums that are the best-selling albums. 
and none of the sweet compilation albums have been big sellers. Um, so that gives us a chance at number three and number four. So that's bands covering them and inclusion in media, right? Mm -hmm. Lots and lots of bands have covered sweet. The first one that came immediately to mind, and honestly, my introduction to sweet was when Crocus covered Ballroom Blitz on the album The Blitz. So Headhunter was a big album. It went gold. And The Blitz also went gold. Um, if they released Ballroom Blitz, I'm pretty sure they had a video for it on MTV. But if it was released mm. as a single, it didn't make the even the top 100. They did have a single make the top 100, but it, it wasn't the sweet cover. Um, Another uh, big example is uh, Def Leppard covered Hellraiser on their covers album, Yeah. Uh, and I think it's a fine cover, actually, but it clearly didn't make much impact on, you know, mass media. Lots of uh, lots and lots of people have covered Ballroom Blitz. Um, but it didn't really do anything to resurrect the band in people's consciousness. So that leaves us number four, other mass media. Before you move on there, Reed, so The Damned covered Ballroom Blitz and Saxon famously covered Set Me Free. Did they? Uh, it was Set Me Free, right? On, on Crusader, right? I think so, yeah. Yeah, um, and, and not very good, not a very good version. It's just kind of thin and doesn't, doesn't groove as well. So, sweet, sweet just, Sweet's versions of their own songs are better than anybody can cover them. They're just right. recorded great. Oh yeah, it's great. And and Brian no Palmer. comparison, no yep. comparison. I'm I'm having trouble picturing the damned covering sweet. I need to check that out. Yeah. Um. All right. So number four, other media, and they have appeared in a lot of other media. For instance, Ballroom Blitz again uh, was in Guitar Hero. The video game Guitar Hero was a big late career push for a lot of bands. Uh, didn't have much effect for Sweet. We go back to the Wayne's World movie. One of the most bizarrely influential movies in 90s rock music. It had a kick and soundtrack. You had Black Sabbath on there with Time Machine. A slightly different and in my mind actually superior version to the uh, version that ends up on Dehumanizer. You've got the, the infamous Bohemian Rhapsody scene, which apparently Freddie Mercury was actually even able to watch before he died. Uh, you've got Alice Cooper performing Feed My Frankenstein and the we're not worthy, we're not worthy. Those things were big bumps for, I mean, obviously for Queen, it was huge. It was actually really good for Alice Cooper because, I mean, he was he was going along, but he wasn't exactly at the top of his game, and that gave him a big push up. Uh, I don't think it helped Sabbath at all. Um, does you know how many people remember that Tia Carrera covered Ballroom Blitz in that movie? Probably not a lot, and I think a, a big reason for that is because these other songs, when they have Queen. They're playing Queen. When they have Alice Cooper, they're playing Alice Cooper. When they get to Sweet, it's Tia Carrera. Um, and no offense to her talent, but no one cares that somebody is covering this one song that everybody covers. At this point, people probably think it's like a jazz standard. Nobody knows who did that song. It just appeared out of nowhere, and everybody covers it, right? Um, and the place that I see... More references to Sweet than any other place is in David Bowie documentaries because people love to talk about Ziggy Stardust and the Spiders from Mars, the glam period, and they mention other glam bands like Roxy Music and Sweet, and they'll have some footage of Sweet singing Fox on the Run or something like that. But being tagged along with David Bowie is only helping David Bowie. So my, my kind of, of final summation, in, in my opinion, I think Sweet is being forgotten. I think that they are a one-song band as far as rock radio goes. Uh, and if people remember them at all, they will remember them as being part of a glam movement in conjunction with other artists 
like Bowie. Bowie had that, you know, he was number two. He was so big that he just never left public consciousness and then had the bizarre uh, life event to die at the absolute top of his game and just leave this massive impact. Uh, you know, Sweet doesn't have that. They're, they are going to be remembered by people of a certain vintage. If you were born in the, you know, the mid to late 50s or the, or the 60s, uh, and maybe you listened to their music back then, but in terms of wider media exposure, I don't, I don't think anyone's going to remember them. And by the way, by Rebel Rouser. That is a fantastic book, Martin. I enjoyed the hell out of that book. <laughs> Thanks. There you go. Yeah. Nice job. Yeah, excellent. Well, you know, you have Reed Little on here. He just kind of yeah. runs with it. Absolutely. Uh, but I have nothing. I totally agreed with Reed. I think that uh, not only Sweet, but I think most bands are going to go by the wayside. It's so like I said before, who's talking about Benny Goodman, who was the biggest thing during his era? No one's talking about that. As people, generations go and die off. The thing with the Beatles, though, they keep putting out stuff. Look, the Revolver box set's coming out at the end of the month. They just had Peter Jackson redo Let It Be with a new edit. So they're able to regenerate themselves. If you look at a band like Sweet, what are they doing? The catalog, I think, is just laying there. I mean, this is like a remaster on... And, you know, that's a remaster. This is a remaster. But in the States, they've never had a, a big, you know, what should I say? They haven't had like a big, strong foothold like they had in the UK. Right. I would be interested to know how people look at them in the UK now, you know, because if anything, their legacy will probably extend over there as opposed to the States. But I don't know. Now, Here, see, I think they're going to totally be forgotten. I think if like Def Leppard, now uh, obviously, again, three out of four original members dead. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, you can't come back from that. But if Def Leppard had gone on tour back in 2005, 2006, uh, even with two original members of Sweet and took them on tour and put them up and said, hey, everybody, this was a huge band in our development and we want you to meet them too. That would have introduced them to a to, into a new audience. And by that time, cool. Steve Priest and Andy Scott were famously still feuding, and there mm -hmm. were two suites going at the same time. Steve had the LA suite, and Andy had the UK suite. Right. Which I'm clearly, sure. I mean, neither one of them can have accomplished much. I know you've got the album. Is it no. a good album? Well, see, well, that's one. I mean, they've done other stuff as well. So Andy's done a lot of originals, but but the Steve Priest version didn't do uh, very many original, or maybe no originals, but they had a live album. And it was good. I saw them live twice, actually. Yeah. Um, they had that good that good front man. I can't remember his name now. Joe something, I think. Yeah, um, I but they they were a, they were a good band. But um, yeah, unfortunately, they ne they never made any originals. And Andy Scott Sweets uh, Scott's Sweet uh, just put out. Um, you know, a really good quality, brand new, sweet like original and video during the pandemic sometime, maybe about a year and a half ago or something. Just just one song or, or the, the album? Uh, yeah, there, there was a whole album, I think. Right, Grant? I, I believe. I don't know. I'm not. I need to track that down. I'm not hip to that era of sweet at all. Yeah, I think there was. Well, it, it came and went. And like I say, right. some of it, like this is. This is all originals, but they've got, you know, as many live things as, you know, and that's the other problem with this band is, is as Reed mentioned, you know, the reason they don't have that, that, you know, really stratified, perfect, you know, box set, uh, beautiful reissue sort of situation is they were on, you know, I, I mean, the main stuff was, was a fairly stable label situation, but there's mm -hmm. been a lot of, a lot of business hassles in that band over the years, but, you know, the, the neat thing that I, I found out in doing the book is that they seem to have their powder pretty dry when they were big and they were and they were accumulating money and they weren't particularly ripped off along the way. So they did quite well. 72, 73, 74, 75. Mm -hmm. And I yeah. think that Queen owes a lot to sweet. You know, there's well, a lot of. Uh, Certainly, sweet feels that way. I don't yeah. know that Queen no, reciprocates. I hear a that lot feeling. of. Well, I hear a lot of sweet and Queen. I'm just gonna 
give you that. But I think Queen's going to have a much better longevity as opposed to Sweet. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Maybe not well, in the United States, but definitely in Europe. You know, <laughs> you know if, if you look anywhere. In, I mean, they have multi, multi-platinum albums, many of them, right? Right. So right. Queen and Sweet's massive. career only went to a certain point. I don't yeah. even know what – does anybody know what this even did? Like, did well, it, it go gold? Yeah, uh, I mean gold. nothing. Functions. And that's and that's where they really like stopped being heavy at all. He just wanted to be like a proggy pop band at that mm-hmm. point. And it's Andy driving the whole thing. But yeah, there's there's nothing heavy on that album. No. Yeah. No. And Andy is a mad talent. I mean, he was a hell of a player and he could sing. I mean, he wasn't quite the singer Brian was, but he was a great singer. Yeah. That band so was Steve. loaded with talent. Well, yeah. Love is like oxygen is all Andy. That's his all he built that in the studio and then presented it to the band. I mean, it's amazing. I yeah. love love is like oxygen. It's a top notch. Oh, band. I love discophony too. Discophony mm-hmm. is amazing. On it's great. That's great. Oh, that reminds me one more media thing. Uh, love is like oxygen was quoted multiple times in the, in the movie Moulin Rouge. Hmm. Uh, but they have dialogue that's made up of, of pieces of songs. So um, people may not have realized that was referring to a sweet lyric. But again, clearly it didn't do anything to to elevate them in public consciousness. Right. Yeah. Well, there Grant, you have you said your piece yet, particularly? I don't think you kind of have. Oh, right? well, you know, I kind of, being the host, I kind of okay. work my magic. But uh, my whole take on it, I don't think they're going to be remembered. Not in the States. Mm-hmm. I'd love to have someone's opinion, like in the UK. They might be well more... They, if, bleh, bleh, they might be well they might be more remembered over there than here but here i think they're going to fade away and hell i must say that that whole glam rock movement which was never as big here as it was overseas i think maybe the whole movement may be forgotten i mean people i think will still remember bowie but you know like t-rex was never big over here a lot of those bands were never big you know they're yeah. just kind of like a little blip on the if if I remember correctly, I, I think the sweet guys have sort of said, yeah, we were big in the UK, but mm-hmm. we seem to be bigger in Germany and, and other parts of the world. And then I think there was also a little bit of that later on thing where they spent too much time in the States and they had the, you know, the apocryphal, the UK crowds turned on them because they weren't home enough, that kind of thing. Well, what about Slade, who were huge in the UK? Here, I mean, Sweet had more of a presence here than Slade ever did. Well, you know what, Slade know. Slade is a perfect example because while they were known to a small segment of musos in the United States, it was bands talking about Slade and then, of course, Quiet Riot taking Slade up to number one uh, that gave them whatever exposure they were ever going to get in the United States. Uh, and none of the seemingly limitless covers of Ballroom Blitz just ever had that impact. Right. And Grant, you have to remember Sweet's impact in the States. They were definitely the it band for a while there. They It was it was a magical. Everybody was talking about Sweet, but it was very short lived. It right. was it was basically Ballroom Blitz, Fox on the Run, a couple other songs from that record this on radio. record and that was it yeah yeah short lived you know and and taking it to gold and and you almost think i mean i remember those days i remember that year um but uh but to think it it only went gold seems you know it's it's very similar to the thin lizzy situation one gold record right um they it's had hard the, to imagine they had the one kind of hit time but thin lizzy thin lizzy i think uh you know the 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 length of time that they were sort of in america wasn't a lot more uh, than sweets, but I think it was considered more than sweets, and they and they they had more of a go of it, you know, Johnny the Fox, Bad Reputation, mm-hmm. those records, Black Rose, so they so they they you know they, they didn't fall off the cliff as fast as Sweet did. Sweet confused a lot of people. Well, I mean, on the record, frankly, just didn't sell anyways. Um, you know, that was a King of the Delete Bin record, um, but they uh, so it's not like like it was uh, you know. Uh, uh, level headed was uh was like a necessary change or or a, or like a career suicide thing already it has it didn't work for them you know give us a wink every you know every metalhead kind of really respects that record but but on the record for some reason people 
it, it just was completely ignored. Um, nothing, nothing came of that. And then they, and then they confused everybody with the direction change. I mean, I don't yeah. think give us a wink really had a single cockroach maybe. Yeah. Give us a wink. Uh, where's my, give us a wink here. So, um, yeah, the, the drum sound on this is amazing. You know, mm -hmm. recorded at Music Land. Mick Tucker was in, was a monster. Oh talent my God, too, what a like talent! Um, but uh, you know, I I kind of remember Lady Starlight, Fourth of July, yeah. the lies in your eyes. Oh, action! Action that was is the big action. Yeah. action. Action okay. was a big single. Yeah, yeah. So that that got a lot of play as well. Action. I really yeah. like that song because it's uh, it's got so many things going going on in it it's almost like the uh the edited version of bohemian rhapsody in a way it's it's their bohemian rhapsody but uh yeah this is just uh this, to me this is a 10 out of 10 album even though it's not all heavy but it's beautifully recorded and quite heavy so martin do you have the canadian pressing or the u.s pressing uh i have a uh i have a u.s one here because the track listing on the uk album is different at uh -huh. least on the CD action is a bonus track. Cause it was, you know, you know how they did it in the UK. They wouldn't put their singles on records. It's the whole yeah. thing the Beatles would do. So I think yeah. sweet pretty much followed that, but you know, it's all recorded during the same session. So yeah. But yeah, yeah that's, a, that's a, a great track. Yeah. Masterpiece of a song. And, and that was actually a pretty big single in America. You know, I, I really think this album, uh, if I was to guess, I think this album went well over 300,000 in the States. Mm. Well, there you go. Yeah. So no one was tracking it back then. So, and, and now it, it just, you know, sales trickle out. If you, if you go to Amazon, uh, that, which is about the closest you can get without having some sort of access, right? Uh, click mm -hmm. on its sales rank in Amazon and it's way down there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Grant, we've, we've lost, lost you, sir. Your audio. Uh, or yeah. go on Spotify and see the amount of plays like a particular track had, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. And let's not forget Ballroom Blitz, we do hear it at sports events too, right? Yeah. Yeah. They they do play that signature drum, you know, fill roll, lick, whatever you want to call it. Lick, I suppose, is the the best way. And it's 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 basically a blitz creek creek bop sort of moment, right? Mm -hmm. So it, I know it's it's impossible now to ever know because their history is set in stone. But we're all armchair quarterbacking this anyway. So if well, if you look at Sweet, because they are a very schizophrenic band, right? So they have those pure bubblegum singles at the beginning, the whole Chin Chapman era uh, of, and and I love songs like Blockbuster. I actually think that's a great song, uh, but it's no action. Don't um, forget that Chin Chapman are also in on some of their heaviest, most modern, awesome heavy metal songs as well. Okay, it's kind of weird. Yeah, it's it's weird like that. But they're but they're kind of writing writing some of the super heavy stuff too. If if do you think if they had either come out heavier or stayed poppier, maybe they would have had a longer impact rather than going opposite directions? Good question. Well, one of the big problems with them was Brian Connolly's voice was getting blown out. Remember, he had the famous thing where he got stomped on the neck at a bar in a bar fight, right? Oh, um, right. So he he had his vocal cords badly damaged. He never had a lot of confidence, anyways, um, and it was always a struggle for him to sing. But it became more of a struggle, and then and then the drinking happened and stuff. So, um, you know, but yeah, I, I think I think this is a band that had so much talent that had they made four or five heavy records. They would have uh, they would have become pretty big stars. I agree. So in in that vein, do you think the name is a handicap? Sweet is not a particularly heavy metal name. Just throwing that out. Yeah, mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't... think it's more their haircuts. I'm looking yeah. at those haircuts. I, and yeah, the the clothes the were outfits. ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, the outfits yeah. were so bad, and and the makeup it, it all looked very slapdash. You know thrown together a little bit it and it looked a little bit like the the whole twisted sister thing the whole whatever happened mary jane kind of thing right um Ooh. so uh so uh did i get that reference right i don't know is there a movie yes. or yeah yeah whatever so, happened to right. baby jane baby yeah. jane there we go okay um i think i'm thinking of a love hate song possibly i don't know mary jane uh but uh but yeah that they um they were one of the most ridiculous looking of the bands although the most ridiculous i think gets reserved for anybody who had the irish show band matching suits 
like mud, <laughs> right? Mud, mud tiger feet is just something to behold. That video will just blow your mind. Read if you've never seen it, go look up the tiger feet video by mud because it's also a pretty heavy, sweet type song. But huh. it, but they, they actually look 3.5 times more ridiculous than sweet ever did. I think okay. Slade even looked more out there than Sweet. Oh yeah, Slade Slade looked ridiculous too. Yeah, so I'm I'm right. just making a note on the Tiger Feet thing so I don't forget it cuz my memory is a sieve. But yeah. do you think Angel were kind of the inheritors of Sweet in the US? They had the white outfits and they had the little bit less intense sound. I mean, Angel was not as intense as Give Us a Wink, but Definitely. Yeah, you're right. I mean, Angels, Angels similar to Sweet. Yeah, I, I would say they're a similar kind of band. Proggy, heavy. Yeah, same yeah. same kind of product mix. Like they kind of continued right on with that trend, you know? Yeah. But I don't think there was any connection made nah. from Angel. You know, Angel's connection was more to Kiss. Right. The whole Casablanca mm -hmm. thing, the white versus black thing, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, there yeah. you go. I don't... I don't have anything more to add. Anybody else have anything to add? I don't think, well, I think the general consensus is I think Sweet will be forgotten. Unfortunately, they don't have that strong reissue campaign like the Beatles have. And, you know, of course, the Beatles are like in everyone's DNA at this point. But someday the Beatles will be forgotten, too. The Stones will be forgotten. The Kinks. There are so many bands. Like, Reed, you mentioned Quiet Riot. Who really remembers Quiet Riot? Just my generation, man. That's it. Literally, they were just a little glimmer on that whole hair metal thing. To be honest, I mean, you might hear them every now and then on FM rock radio here in the yeah. States. But yeah. You know, Kevin DeBrow might as well have been a glam rocker uh, with the outfits. And uh, he was the vainest human being I ever met. I mean, Quiet Right will go down in, in history that once uh, Randy Rhodes played in the band. That will be their legacy. Yeah. Yeah. You know, to your point about, you know, it's pretty radical to say the Beatles and the Stones will be forgotten, but there's a kernel eventually. of wisdom in there in that, in that, and it's the same reason for Sweet, but it'll be accelerated. I mean, literally the right. fans will die off. Yes. And for Sweet, you know, it's going to be much more, uh, you know, thorough and, uh, and pronounced that the fans will die off. Like Sweet literally could be quite, quite, quite forgotten. I Fields think and Stones, it's going to be like, okay, well, all of rock and roll has to be forgotten. Anything with a guitar, bass, and drums has to be forgotten for those guys to get forgotten. Right. And I must say there are some sweet CDs in the bins that have price books here in Columbus. And I was there a month ago when they were sitting there. And I went back there the other day and they're still sitting there. So I don't really, and it's uh, Sweet Fanny Adams, Level Headed, and s something else I can't remember, but they're still sitting there. I know they're CDs and I know we're in the cool vinyl era, but I'm just saying, no one's picked CDs, them up. CDs are making a comeback. But no one's picked them up. Yeah. Columbus is a little off my beaten track. Well, I'm just saying they're still in the bins, kids. They're still in the yeah. bins. So, unfortunately, as great as Sweet is, they probably will be forgotten. But at least we did a video, and we're trying to get Sweet back out there. And hopefully, someone will go out and find these releases and try to keep their what's left of them alive, you know. I don't know, but it's great stuff. You have to admit sweet Fanny Adams. Oh my God. What a great record. And in the States, if you can get this, Oh, I know what it was. It was desolation Boulevard was the U S pressing of this. If you can pick this up, anybody it's well worth getting. It's I know this is basically a compilation, but it takes the best of sweet Fanny Adams and, what was the other one did it take from? Uh, it just, it takes singles. It's, it's on right. the Boulevard itself. They were both right. 74 That's albums. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Had a I mean, basically if you like Montrose, Kiss, Aerosmith, Derringer, Ted Nugent, Blue you'll Oyster like Cult, Angel, you'll like Sweet. You'll like it. So there you go. I don't think we have anything more to add. Martin, is there anything else that you want to promote while you're here or anything else coming up? 
particularly. I mean, I've got martinpopoff.com for the books. I've got the the two, you know, my old Alice Cooper book has been busted into two trade paperbacks, so that's mm-hmm. now Easy Action, the original Alice Cooper band, uh, and uh, Feed My Frankenstein, Alice Cooper, the, the solo years, and then my new Damned book, which I really like. Uh, although it's just, it's just a trade paperback. It's nothing fancy in the design, but it's probably my best book for writing, for, for the words, because I basically break down every single... Uh, damned uh, song uh, that they ever did. And of course, um, you know, we've got the Contrarians video channel and I've got mm-hmm. History and Five Songs with Martin Popoff uh, podcast. Excellent. And I do have a question. Do you still have any of the Angel book in stock? Yes, it came back into print. Um, wow. It was out of print for a, a year or two and it's now back. So I've yeah, got about I need 25 that. of them. I need that. So I will be in contact. Read Little, is there anything coming up with you? You know, I just parasite off other people's channels, but I want to, I've been, I've been plugging this everywhere because I think this is the coolest thing. Alice Cooper live from the Astro turf. So I talk about this all the time. This was a show. It was supposed to be a Dennis Dunaway book signing at a tiny record shop in Dallas, Texas. And, uh, during that book signing event, we got a concert with all the surviving members of Alice Cooper. Alice was actually in Dallas to do a concert the following day, and he came in and did five numbers with the band. So it was Michael Bruce, Dennis Dunaway, Neil Smith, Alice Cooper, and then his uh, Alice's touring guitar player, Ryan Roxy, filling in for um, Glenn Buxton. Glenn. Yeah. So just an absolutely amazing event. It's now out on CD and DVD. I love the fact that it's available. I love the fact that I was there when it was recorded. Uh, if you have a microscope, you can see myself and my wife standing in the audience for a quarter of a second. You'll never recognize me. I was still working then uh, and had much shorter hair. But um, it's a fantastic artifact. If you like the original Alice Cooper group, check it out. Uh, it's just amazing. Excellent. Yeah, I know that we had a, there might be, I don't know, on the contrarians, there might possibly be an Alice Cooper Dada discussion. I'm hoping that that will get picked up. I voted for that, but anyway. Be sure to check that out. Reed's got great stuff. So I want to thank Martin Popoff. I want to thank Reed Little for coming in tonight for this discussion. What a great discussion. It's nice to do something different than a ranking video and just have a general discussion. You know, there's so much to talk about. I appreciate everyone coming on. Please like, subscribe, check out the Contrarians, subscribe to that channel as well. Both Martin and of course, reader on there. I just want to thank everybody for tuning in and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Thanks everyone.